What's up? So you saw in the video, I started doing front squats and that came on the heels of talking to Dan Green. And, you know, we were kind of assessing my squat progress and, you know, he was very encouraging about the 507 pound squat or whatever, how fluidly it looked. And um, he also was the one who pointed out that the 553, some things started to change and the mechanics looked off. <clears throat> he asked me how, um, how much work I was doing directly for the quads and specifically the quad tendon. And, you know, like I said, I've done some things as far as very, very light leg extensions, um, 10, 20 pounds per leg, just a hundred repetitions trying to get some blood in there. But, you know, something like front squats is a, is a totally different world as far as the stress put on the quad and specifically the quad tendon. And one of the things that he and I were talking about trying to achieve in doing the front squats you know, in a normal squat, it's it's good to have a balance where the the butt is pushing back and the the knees aren't traveling over the foot. You know, to try to create a, you know the most powerful balance. But in the case of the front squat, where I'm trying to achieve two things for future progression, is that I'm trying to allow the knee to travel more over the foot than normal. Um, I'm really trying to keep the hips you know, kind of rotated somewhat in, not stressing them out. And I'm trying to allow them to travel. And what that's doing is it's, it's firing the quads in a much different way than I've ever felt before. And also stretching that quad tendon where I'm very, very tight. <clears throat> For those that don't know, um, I had 13 knee surgeries on the left uh, side. Most of those were related to infection or repair. And every single time they would go down and through the quad tendon. So it's been repaired multiple times. Um, I think three surgeries ago, they actually put in a cadaver tendon. And ever since then, things have felt much better because before, you know, that tendon had just taken such a beating through the various surgeries and the initial injury. So I'm really excited that they put the cadaver tendon in. It's just a much better feeling. Um, the right side of my right knee uh, the quad tendon was one of the tears also in that knee when I fell. So, um, you know, it was, uh, it was bad, but it wasn't as bad as the left knee. So it's almost back to a hundred percent as far as flexibility, range of motion, all of that stuff. But the left knee still has work to do. And the front squats are going to be something that I'm going to be implementing over the next, you know, well, really for the next year or two, uh, in an effort to try to get back because, um, I've always kind of adapted to that West side style squat, which is more posterior chain and I've achieved good success. But now, you know, in, a, in that type of squat situation where you're removing the quads, you know, from, from being a main mover now where the quads are even more deficient and I'm trying to come back in the stance a little bit or narrow my stance a little bit because of the, the way that I move now, I think, or we think after talking that if we can bring the quads up and maintain the power that I've developed in the posterior chain, that that will lead to new growth, new gains. So that's why we did that. Um, as far as the um, the bench workout, it's kind of my accessory day. Uh, that's, that's typically what it looks like. I used to do just bench press um, on the accessory day also. I mean, as far as like the main movement, but I've also found that you know, just from a mental standpoint, it's fun to get in there and do different machines, different exercises. I mean, everything looked basically the same except leading off with that hammer strength press, or I think it was the iron fitness or something like that. But, um, you know, that, that was a good movement for me and it very, it very, very much isolated areas that I feel weakness and I've had uh, problems before. Uh, this pec tie in right here got very, very sore because I was able to just drive it without having to worry about the stabilizer, um, doing more reps. I did about six sets of eight there. Uh, and then I worked up to the one with the big drop set or the rest pause set. And, uh, you know, just really put in a bunch of rep work and really tried to move fast, tried to move a good amount of weight, not trying to, uh, impress anybody with the weight on the bar. I mean, that was, that was pretty heavy on that particular machine. But the reason I, I like that machine is because of Justin Compton, uh, the IFBB pro. He was my neighbor for a while, and he really stressed how, how much he liked that machine as a, 
as a hypertrophy exercise. And then also the few times that we benched together, um, he was abnormally strong in the bench press and he credited it to that machine and allowing him to focus just on muscular development and not, not all the stabilization work, which I know sounds a little bit counterintuitive for a power lifter, but the bench is an area where I've always, always, always been really, really good with the stabilizing stuff, probably over stabilizing because I'm too slow. So I'm trying to learn more to just like really pump some reps out and, and gain confidence in that movement. Uh, because you know, at 500 plus pounds, 600 plus pounds, every single millimeter matters. So, um, and also the, the descent of the bar, the reversal of the bar, all those things come into the equation of success. So I'm trying to, to get the motor pattern to move more quickly. Um, as you saw there, I started doing my uh, incline bench press afterward with dumbbells. That's something that I've always done. Me and uh, Swede always talk about doing those. And we do them in the uh, the 20 rep range. I was doing 80s yesterday. It was probably a little bit easy. Um, that was the last set. We did three sets of uh, 20 there. Um, and usually what I end up doing when I'm at my strongest is between, you know, I've done 100 for 30. And, uh, and then a drop set or the next set being like 21 or 22. So while I'm not where I should be or where I've been, I'm very, very quickly gaining on that number. So, um, like I said in the last video, confidence is very, very high. Um, everything's clicking that, you know, my nutrition's going very well, supplementation's on point and things are just looking up for tattooed and strong. And, um, I, I apologize greatly for the lag in videos. Um, because like I said, I'm trying to put forward as much straightforward information as I can and I don't want to say something in one video and then you know pull back on it in the very next video so the last week was kind of some some testing some ideas you know the front squat for example um, I've changed some things on my deadlift as well that I'll be posting now but um, I don't want to give misinformation because if somebody watches a video and you know they take away from it something that I said I don't want to come back in the very next video and say well that didn't work or I've changed my opinion on that or I'm doing something different. So, um, bear with me. I, I love doing these videos. I love, um, you know, the goal of, of sharing information and sharing parts of myself. Uh, things are going very, very good. Tomorrow, uh, marks the three year anniversary of when I fell. So in that video, I'll talk some about that. I know it's kind of like beating a dead horse, but, um, it'll be very, very brief. And that's a very, um, I mean, that's a, that's a milestone day for me, not the, the fact that it's been three years, but you know, the day that I fell, it was, uh, it was in that moment, probably the worst moment in my life, but it's led to so many wonderful things and so many changes in myself and the way that I look at the world and the way that I look at myself. Um, I'm really excited to talk about it and then I'll have some kick-ass training stuff so stay tuned. I'll break down some more squats because I'm squatting tomorrow. And uh, thanks for watching. Like, follow, subscribe, ask questions. Um, I do the very best that I can to answer the questions. If um, if the video gets more than a few days old, uh, it's it's hard to keep up with the notifications. But if you if you ask the question today, or as you see it, just do the best you can, and I'll do the best that I can too. So thank you guys for watching. I will see you guys later. Thanks.